Warm greetings everybody. The title of today's study is The Law of God Written in the Heart. God is majestic creator and law giver. He established immutable laws in everything he created. He reveals them to us in the material world as the laws of nature, in the health world as the laws of health, and in the spiritual or moral world we are given God's law of the Ten Commandments. By transgressing these laws or principles, we bring upon ourselves the inevitable consequences. By breaking natural laws, we get injured. By breaking health laws, we get diseases. And by breaking moral laws, we destroy our spirit, soul, body and interpersonal relationships. God's law of Ten Commandments is a display of God's character. It is a description of His inner being and reveals God's love, holiness, righteousness and goodness. For this reason exactly the same expressions are you describing God's character and God's law. God's law is the foundation of God's rule in both heaven and earth. In it are stated the principles which he is using in the management of all created things. That is why the law of God is in the Ark of the Covenant, which represents the throne of God from which God works, acts and relates according to these principles of love with all his creatures. God personally wrote the Ten Commandments by his hand, desiring to reveal to us who he is. A sinful man cannot reveal to us who God is, not even a sinless angel. Only he who is equal to God, and that is the Son of God, was able to reveal us the character of our Heavenly Father. That is why the law of God is within the Ark of the Covenant, which represents the throne of God, from which God acts and reveals himself to his creatures. God is holy and that is why his law is holy too. They rest not day and night saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. Who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? For thou only art holy. He says, Only is the Father holy. Then for the law says, Wherefore the law is holy, and the commandment holy and just and good. We see that the commandment is holy because it reveals the holy character of God. God is righteous, therefore his law is righteous too. For the righteous Lord loveth righteousness, his countenance doth behold the upright. To show that the Lord is upright, he is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him. Then he says for the law, My tongue shall speak of thy word, for all thy commandments are righteousness. His all commandments are righteous, the same way he is good, holy and righteous. God is good, therefore his law is good too. Or despises thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and longsuffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. But we know that the law is good if a man use it lawfully. God is love, therefore his law is love. He says in First John, God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Jesus says, If ye love me, keep my commandments. He that had my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. How do we show love to God? By living according to God's commandments. We will see after it is impossible to us humans, but God is the one who will help us and make it possible for us that we can make it and to become a delight to us. Then he says God is spiritual, therefore his law is spiritual too. Usually when people speak of God's law, they say 
it's a dead letter on a paper, it is old fashioned, and etc. However, the Bible is saying that God is spiritual, and that for this reason his law is spiritual too. And so we need to look at the law as the revelation of God's spirit, or God's character. Everything divine and heavenly is depicted as spiritual, and it is in contrast to what is earthly and carnal. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. For we know that the law is spiritual. The law is spiritual, for it is the description of God's spirit, or God's character. God is perfect, therefore his law is perfect too. Dost thou know the balancings of the clouds, the wondrous works of him which is perfect in knowledge? The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The law of the Lord is perfect. Can we call something that is perfect and that strengthens our soul bad, outdated and unnecessary? Lawlessness or sin is what degrades, weakens and abases us. We receive the following call. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father, which is in heaven, is perfect. How is it possible for a man to live to such a perfectly high standard? The answer is, only if he who is perfect lives in him, the scripture says. And I have declared unto them thy name, and thy name is referred to the character. Jesus says, Father, thy name or thy character I show to the people, your goodness, holiness, love and will declare it, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. That same divine love, goodness, holiness, purity should be in us as well. And how it will be in us, how can it be in us? Jesus says, I in them. If we have the Spirit of Christ, then Christ who lives in us will reveal his love, his goodness, his holiness through our life. This is the requirement of God's law and nothing less than that. It all comes to whether we have Christ in us or we don't. Who has the Son of God has everlasting life and who doesn't have the Son in himself has no life. Because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. And this is how it is done. And then we have the Spirit of Christ. It is very important to be born again so the Spirit of God can dwell in us. For this reason we need the new birth or as the Bible calls it circumcision of the heart. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. We are all born of flesh, sinful. And that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where he listeneth. And thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So it is every one that is born of the Spirit. We need new birth from Christ, and we need to become his new humanity, or mankind he's making. No man can live up to and satisfy the high and perfect standard of God's law by himself, all by his own strength. For what is born of the flesh is flesh. This means that we are carnal and have a carnal mind that governs our soul. That is why Paul constantly emphasizes in his epistles that keeping the law by our own strength is not the way and the high standard cannot help us in that, but will only show us that we are not able to achieve it and reveal our sinfulness. Jesus says, 
I am the way. It is only by being born again from Christ, the second Adam, when we receive his life or his spirit, then that the law of God is written in our heart. We then receive Christ's perfection, love and goodness. Only being born again of God we can live according to his law, for then it is written in our heart. Through the new birth of a sinner, by receiving again the Spirit of Christ, God testifies to sinless worlds what was given to us upon creation and how solemnly they should value it. it is Christ's righteousness through Christ's Spirit which dwells in them. If they would misuse this priceless gift and fence which protects them from sin, they would fall into iniquity and follow the path of fallen angels and fallen men, which leads to degradation and death. That is why our little world is a class book for innocent worlds, who observe and learn from us. Thanks be to Christ, who through his Spirit he dwells in angels, unfallen worlds and us people. We can be protected from sin. For this reason, Jesus said, if the Son of Man sets you free, only then you will indeed be free. For I think that God had set forth, as the Apostle last, as it were appointed to death. For we are made a spectacle unto the world, and to the angels, and to men. Apostles were a spectacle to the world, angels, men, and fallen worlds. And Christ is showing what he can do in a sinful and fallen man when he accepts him for his Saviour. The next verse says, To the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. How does God make a saint out of a sinner? When a sinner receives Christ's heart, that is his life, then he receives Christ's holiness, love, goodness, purity, and Christ's perfection. At this point, all that we just mentioned starts to radiate out of a man around him. Then the unfallen world see this and they realize that all that goodness which is in them does not source out of them but was gifted to them through Christ's Spirit at their creation. Then they also have a reason to glorify God for this great gift, which is the Son of God, Jesus Christ, in them, who was given to them. And this is love, that we walk after His commandments. The love and the commandments go together and cannot be set apart. To speak about God's law as something void or old-fashioned is like saying that God too is void and old-fashioned, which is very blasphemous. When in scriptures speak of the curse of the law, it refers to the consequences that follow if we don't satisfy its holy demands. That's when we ruin relationships, we grieve children, spouses, parents, bring unrest, dissatisfaction and spoil the harmony and perfection in interpersonal relationships. Speaking of the law as being heavy, grievous and a yoke that is hard to bear is the opposite of what is written in scripture. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are no grievous. Only a newborn person can say this. However, the person who has not experienced new birth, and this can also happen to baptized Christians, from their own experience conclude that not only the commandments are grievous and hard, but impossible to keep. Only a newborn can experience and say that his commandments are no grievous. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls.
for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Jesus wants to give us rest and new spirit and a new heart, that is, thoughts and feelings, and then we will experience that his commandments indeed are no grievous and heavy. What is too difficult and impossible without Christ becomes joyful and easy in Christ. It is because we get new nature, that is a new mind, motives and feelings, and this is drawing us closer to God and His law. Carnal mind which we inherit by birth is in enmity with God, it says about it. The righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Here we see the answer, that we without Christ, we do not subject ourselves to the law of God, neither indeed we can, for we have a carnal mind which is in opposition to the law. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And in Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. Bible teaches that Christ is our righteousness. A carnal person who has not been born again by the Divine Spirit, has not experienced new creation, says from his personal experience that life according to God's law is impossible and it is a heavy yoke and such person opposes this law because it condemns him and makes him have a troubled conscience. Such a person likes to hear that the law of God has been made void, that it doesn't apply and that we are given freedom to live according to a spirit which is opposing to these perfect principles. Unlike carnal person, a spiritual person by receiving the Spirit of Christ also receives new motives and a mind which is in agreement with holy principles, and he has the experience that the commandments of God are not difficult and that they strengthen the soul. Scriptures reveal God to us as the one who is love, just, good, holy, and as such is eternal and unchanging. That is why the law, as a revelation of his character, is also love, just, good, holy, and as such is eternal and unchanging. It says about it, For verily I say unto you, Till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. And it is easier for heaven and earth to pass than one tittle of the law to fail. What is sin then? I had not known sin but by the law, for I had not known lust except the law had said, Thou shalt not covet. But sin, taking occasion by the commandment, wrought in me all manner of concupiscence, for without the law sin was dead. Since the law of love is the foundation of God's rule, the happiness of all created beings depend on their complete conformity to these glorious principles of justice. That is why God, when creating all intelligent beings, inscribed this law in their hearts by giving them his spirit to live in them. This is how we receive the law in us, by receiving Christ's spirit. God's spirit dwelt in them for righteousness, revealing God's perfect love in their lives. However, Satan abused his freedom, pride due to his own glory and the high position that God had given him, 
did not awaken in him gratitude to the Creator. On the contrary, him being a creature wanted to equal with his Creator. Lucifer began to spread discontent among the angels regarding the law in heaven, claiming that it was a necessary restriction. The law is an unnecessary yoke and a law of slavery that limits freedom. Lucifer told the angels the same as he preaches to people today. He emphasized that angels are holy by nature and should live according to the dictates of their free will. However, he did not know that angels are holy only if God lives in them by his Holy Spirit and that God is the only one who is just, good and holy. He did not know that every being who separates from God loses God's spirit and thus holiness, goodness and righteousness and selfishly turns to himself and lives contrary to these perfect divine principles of love. And he did not know all this. God allowed the principles of lawlessness and sin to develop so that both angels and men would see how meaningless and cruel life is when the perfect principles of God's law, of freedom and love, are not followed. We live in a world of injustice, sin, hatred, immorality, disrespect, wars and murders, where some get rich upon the misfortune and suffering of others, following Satan's principles of self-will and selfishness. Sin separates us from God and therefore from his holy law. No being, be it angel or man, can live apart from God according to these glorious principles of unselfishness, goodness and self-sacrifice in love. Only someone who is equal to God could become a man and live such a holy, righteous, good and perfect life in a fallen human body and thus glorify God and make the law great and glorious. He who came to save us and restore the image of God in us was the Son of God personally. For the commandment is a lamp and the law is light and reproofs of instruction are the way of life. The law is light and as such is holy, just and good, while sin or iniquity as transgression of the law is depicted as darkness and night. Jesus is the only person who could illuminate the world with the light of the law of God's love. Only the one who was light could come and reveal the light. We read of it in the Gospel of John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, says, Jesus says, I'm resurrection and life. And the life was the light of men, and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light. John witnessed of Jesus, Jesus was light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, so John wasn't the light, but was sent to bear witness of that light, of Jesus. That was the true light which lighted every man that cometh into the world. The only true light is Jesus the Son of God for he only could reveal the Father in the fullness of divine light, purity, love and goodness. For this reason he says, that was the true light which lighted every man that cometh into the world, and indeed he came. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, or through Christ, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him to them gave he power to become the sons of God even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. So by the new birth, receiving the Spirit of Christ from God, we become that new perfect mankind. And the Word was made flesh, in other words, Jesus took the human flesh, and dwelt among us, 
and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And of his fullness have all we received, and grace for grace. The angels upon the lid of the Ark of the Covenant represent the great interest of angels and all inhabitants of sinless worlds, who observe and learn how God helps fallen and corrupted beings to regain God's holiness and righteousness, for the law of God only accepts that, and nothing less. That is why we should be participants in the divine nature of Jesus Christ, to receive his life through his Spirit, which is perfect according to God's law, and which is holy, just and good, same as the Father's or God's. For the inhabitants of sinless worlds, the greatest and most magnificent miracle they observe is how the Creator turns an unholy, unjust and selfish sinner into a saint and a person in whom Christ's perfect life, according to God's law, is revealed. Think not that I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to, to fulfill. All that thou hadst hearkened unto my commandments, then had thy peace been as a river, and thy righteousness as the waves of the sea. But people do not pay attention to God's commandments today. For the Lord is our judge, the Lord is our lawgiver, the Lord is our king, he will save us. A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another, and as I have loved you, that ye also loved one another. These are the commandments which we heard in the beginning, but he revealed them to us in a practical and magnificent way, to love one another by divine love, Love that is greater than death, we men do not have that, but we do receive it through the Spirit of Christ. For Christ, he says, the Lord is well pleased for his righteousness sake, he will magnify the law and make it honorable. Can you imagine a creator who perfectly lived according to the law in the human flesh, and he would rather die than to transgress any of his commandments? He cannot transgress them, for they reveal who he is. In other words, the law is him. He is good, righteous, and immutable, so the law is. They could kill him, but could not provoke him to do something wrong or sinful. There is no darkness in him, for his light, he is pure and he is righteous, and he revealed this in his life. For this reason we need the new birth or the circumcision of the heart. For circumcision verily profiteth if thou keep the law. Jews were doing the circumcision of the flesh. This was just the symbol of the new birth or the circumcision of the heart. But if thou be a breaker of the law, the circumcision is made uncircumcision. So the circumcision of the flesh is nothing if we are not newborn, same as baptism today. Therefore, if the uncircumcision keep the righteousness of the law, shall not his uncircumcision be counted for circumcision? And shall not uncircumcision, which is by nature, and that is us Gentiles, if it fulfill the law, judge thee, who by the letter and circumcision dost transgress the law? Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid, yea, we establish the law. And in other words, without faith through which we receive Christ's spirit and his new life, it is impossible to live in accordance with the law. Therefore, we need faith, and with no faith it is impossible to please God. And through the faith we receive Christ in our life, and the commandments are then written in our hearts, and thus we establish the law in our life. People of God who live according to God's law have always been persecuted and hated by those who do not live according to God's law. Hearken unto me, ye that know righteousness, the people in whose heart is my law. Fear ye not the reproach of men, neither be ye afraid of their revilings. For the moth shall eat them up like a garment, and the worm shall eat them like wool. 
but my righteousness shall be forever, and my salvation from generation to generation. All who reject the law of God also reject him who has given it, and they lose his protection and go to perdition. Here, O earth, behold, I will bring evil upon this people, even the fruit of their thoughts, because they have not hearkened unto my words, nor to my law, but rejected it. Rejecting the law of God means to reject Christ's spirit and grace. We lose God's protection, and then the enemy comes for his. And I gave them my statutes, and I showed them my judgments, laws, which if a man do, he shall even live in them. But the house of Israel rebelled against me in the wilderness. They walked not in my statutes, and they despised my judgments, that is, laws which if a man do, he shall even live in them, and my Sabbaths they greatly polluted. Then I said I would pour out my fury upon them in the wilderness to consume them. In other words, I will remove my protection, and they will be wiped away by the fallen angels. How I describe those who live according to the law of God. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he mediate day and night. I delight to do thy will, O my God, yea, thy law is within my heart. Blessed is the man whom thou chastenest, O Lord, and teachest him out of thy law. Open thou mine eyes, that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. I am a stranger in the earth, Hide not thy commandments from me. In other words, if our eyes are not anointed by the Spirit of Christ, we cannot see God's beauty, His love. It is important to have His Spirit in us so that the love, the purity, the holiness could reveal in our lives. I'm a stranger in the earth means we don't live here forever. And in other words, while I live here, the psalmist prays, Please hide not thy true meaning of thy law from me. Let me see the true beauty of thy spiritual law while I live in this flesh here on earth. Give me understanding and I shall keep thy law. Yes, I shall observe it with all my heart. So shall I keep thy law continually forever and ever. Newborn person speaks this. Any other interpretation is from the devil. The law of thy mouth is better unto me than thousands of gold and silver. I am thine, save me, for I have sought thy precepts. Great peace have they which love thy law. And why is this? When we receive Christ's Spirit, we have the fruits of love, joy, peace, long-suffering, goodness, mercy, faith, meekness, and self-control. He says that the law has nothing against this because this is the fulfillment of the law. And nothing shall offend them. Lord, I have hoped for thy salvation and done thy commandments. God's people of the end time who are going to meet Christ's second coming, are described as. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Patience is one of the most important character traits that God's people need to possess because they will go through a sorrowful time that has never been since there was a nation until then and a tribulation that has not been since the beginning of the world and will never be. Human laws will make void God's law. Everything will be directed against God's law so that it will seem impossible to remain and live according to the will of God from the human point of view. Keeping the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus are shown to go together and are one whole. They are inseparable. Throughout Christian history, there has been a struggle for God's people to understand the balance between faith and works. Some emphasize faith while others emphasize the works. Based on the third angel's message, God's people of the end will have a balanced understanding of faith and works, which will apply to both their theology and practical experience. God will bless this message by outpouring Christ's spirit 
with no measuring the latter rain. That will be the fate of Jesus and the works of Jesus. It is important when we speak of works or deeds of Jesus to say something. And why is that? Because God asks from us to walk upon the water. The life according to the law of God is us walking upon the surface of the water. And can we do that? We can all our life practice to walk upon the water and we will never make it. It is achieved by faith and reception of God's Spirit. Only then we can do what is impossible to us. And it's so with keeping the law of God. So that will be the fate of Jesus and the works of Jesus in which the people of God of the last days will have experience. Jesus says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he emphasized here, He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do. And these are the deeds of Jesus. Because I go unto my Father, he is going to do greater works than he has done 2,000 years ago in his flesh. If he surrender to his will and his spirit, he will be able to do these works through us. At the end of this study, what does the Holy Scripture tell us? Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. The most beautiful promise of God that is given to those who live according to the law of God is, Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. And how beautiful this promise is. When we know all this, Let's address the words of the psalm to God in a prayer. Let thine hand help me, for I have chosen thy precepts. I have longed for thy salvation, O Lord, and thy law is my delight. May this be your and my experience. Until the next fellowship, God bless you.